has become a bit of a Christmas tradition for Wingnut Wings to release uh, a kit or kits just before the Christmas period and their long Christmas closure. Uh, the last few years they've normally uh, launched a couple of surprises on us, uh, kits that haven't previously been announced and that was to prove the case this year with the announcement of this Hansa Brandenburg W12 early version. Now we already have had the Hansa Brandenburg W29, uh, the monoplane which sold out and this is the earlier biplane uh, which the later kit was uh, based on. So as usual beautiful box art of a Hansa Brandenburg W12 uh, with a Felix Stowe in the background in a rather jazzy red and white camouflage scheme. Normal really high quality presentation not really needed on wing nuts kit as they don't sell them in stores but uh, it really does give a quality feel to the product. As always, the box is full to the brim. Now some of these sprues we've seen before, uh, most noticeably the beaching trolley one, uh, which is moulded in a different colour plastic from the rest of the kit. Um, but, you know, this is a normal high quality product. Every sprue individually bagged to make sure you won't get any damage. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'll quickly run through a couple of the sprues that we haven't seen before. Now this is the fuselage sprue. Um, detail well, it's a wing nuts kit. I'm I'm going to be rephrasing because we just run out of superlatives when it comes to these kits. They are just so beautifully injected, tooled. Everything about them is first rate. Nice example here. I'll see if we can pick it up in the camera. Is the uh, cooling loops on the side of the fuselage? You can see they are actually all drilled out, or not drilled out, moulded out. You know, nothing's been done here. That is absolutely stunning. A really impressive piece of moulding. Now this sprue again shows some really nice moulding touches. Uh, now the first thing I will always look at is the guns. As is normal with the wing nuts kits, you get two versions. Uh, the one on the left is what I call the idiot's version, or the one that I normally use where everything is moulded for you. The one on the right, uh, you only get the barrel, as you can see. You don't get the jacket, which you get on the idiot version. And that's because that's all supplied on an etched brass fret. And that's for the more skilled modeller. Another nice thing on this particular sprue are these exhaust pipes. These are only on one of the options they have, but they are actually hollowed out for you. Uh, you know, I wouldn't really want to try and do that myself, but to have that actually hollowed out is very, very nice. I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up, but they are beautifully done. Detail, again, everything on it first rate. We've got more louves, again, all opened up. Again, another really nice sprue. This is not going to be a small model and uh, in height it will also be quite a tall model because of the uh, large struts on the floats. Now, these are really well cast. You have very large locating pins which will make for an easy and very stable assembly. The wings feature the usual very subtle detail. Uh, of note, you have these very large centre joining sections and that should make for a very firm assembly. Now here we have most of the cockpit detail. Again, we have some very nice uh, detailing as you've seen on the leather seat pad. And exhaust, quite clever this one. We've seen this style of exhaust before on the Yonkers J1 and you had to drill out the end. As can be seen here, it's actually semi-hollowed with a secondary piece in there which when glued on will make a perfect hollowed out exhaust. That just shows how far wing nuts have come. I mean that is really simple but a really nice little touch uh, when you compare to the original Junkers J1 kit which was one of their first releases when wing nuts launched a couple of years ago. Now this is the bag that I mentioned earlier, which is in a slightly different coloured plastic. It includes the uh, beaching trolley, uh, that featured in the W29 kit, and the engine sprue, which is the normal one that we see for the Mercedes engine, uh, which has been in most of the Wing Nut Wings kits, it seems. A very common engine. Um, I'm not going to bother opening that bag up because we've nothing there that we haven't seen before. The clear sprue provides a surprising amount of glazing, actually. Uh, Windshields are not really a surprise. I was a bit confused by the larger windows as I couldn't really see where they fitted at first but these actually fit on the underside of the fuselage so obviously down visibility was incredibly useful on this type of maritime aircraft. This kit comes with two large decal sheets. 
Now, many will appreciate that the complicated lossage panel pattern is actually pre-cut. There's not going to be any mucking around uh, like there was in some of the earlier kits with suede. I'm a less skilled modeler and I'm quite pleased to admit that and this is an absolute godsend for me. I do like these pre-cut sheets. I know some purists prefer the original suede sheets but uh, for me this makes this kit very easy to assemble. And this is the detail sheet. As is normal you get a number of options, uh, all of them quite significant. Very interesting for me was 1410. Uh, because that was uh, also a, a shield insignia that was featured on the W29 kit. Instrument dials, really spot on. I mean, the quality on this sheet is just very high. And like most wingnut kits, decals, they should just apply it very, very easily. The etched brass sheet uh, supplies you with your seat belts and gun jackets and some small details. Really nice little set. As I say, it's really appreciated that you get both this etched brass gun barrel set and the uh, plastic moulded version. So depending on your own individual skill level, you have the choice. And the seat belts are really good, especially if you heat them up and then nail them a bit to make them a bit soft and flexible. Uh, they do look an absolute treat when painted. Now I really started building kits with Wingnut Wings kits uh, because of the ease of construction and on some occasions the lack of rigging. And this is a lack of rigging model. You don't have the large amount of rigging that you see on many World War I types. It really is just uh, two between the interplane struts and a couple down below between the float struts. So it's going to be an easy, easy model to rig. Colour options, they really are uh, a bit diverse. So we'll just run through those quickly so you can have a look and see what you can get. Again, these are all available online. Again, you get the photographs as well, so you can see exactly where they're coming from. That one is the only one with that early stick type exhaust. Uh, it's one of the plainer examples, but it's quite interesting because of the rather unusual exhaust style fitted to it. Here we have uh, one with the black floats. Um, Decals for the floats are the only things that might take a little bit of skill and certainly later on in the war the floats were painted black with bitumen tar uh, to stop salt ingress. So if you are nervous about doing the float decals this might be an option for you or do the float decals if you completely hash it up, paint them black and you've uh, resolved the problem. Another one with black floats. Very interesting, just noticed that you do have the feature to uh, show the cockpit door open as seen in this photograph. That's actually a feature on the kit which would help uh, see the super detail that you have in there. And the last option, now I'm sure this will be the one that most people will go for. It's uh, just a very attractive scheme with the early crosses and that shield. And if you are fortunate enough to have one of the W29 kits and you haven't paid lots of money for it, uh, this is the one to go for. So yet another wonderful release from Wingnut Wings. Now I'm going to just have a little bit of a model club story. There's been a big rumour that when Wingnut Wings release box art, you've got a clue as to what their next kit will be in the background. When this came out, I actually joked at club night that they were going to do a Felix Stowe. Uh, realistically, I hadn't got a clue. Wingnuts play their cards close to the chest, and though people think that as a magazine we get notification in advance, we really don't. We find out about the same time as you from Wingnuts. They don't give us anything in advance. With a three-foot wingspan, I thought it was completely implausible that they would actually build a Felix Stowe. I was wrong, because the other three Christmas releases, or pre-orders, because they haven't actually come in as I'm recording this, is the Felix Stowe in two versions, early and late, and also a third version which includes the W29. That kit has been selling for about $500 on auction sites, and now you can get it for $360, including the Felix Stowe. So if you want that jazzy Felix Stowe, it is going to be available in January for most modelers, and I would hazard a guess that uh, it will be incredibly popular. In fact, the fainting for the red and white Felix Stowe, the late version, is a reverse of this one, where you have the view from the Felix Stowe with the W20, uh, the W12 being attacked.
So as always, our thanks to Richard Alexander and All Up Wing Nut for supplying us with the review sample. Uh, this is the little cover letter that we got with it, so I'm just going to zoom on in it so you can see some of the details of uh, what they're saying about this kit. It is absolutely superb. Another great addition to the Wing Nut Wing stable. Uh, I'm hoping that we'll get to see a Felix though. Um, it is going to be quite an expensive kit. As I say that I, I can't remember the price of it. It's about $260, which is about £170, £180 uh, before import duty. So it's not going to be on everyone's uh, shopping list because of the price. But with a three foot wingspan, it's certainly going to be impressive. So thanks very again very much for Wing Nut Wings. We will keep you posted if we have a Felix though. I'm going to have difficulty videoing it, but I will do my best. <laughs>